Welcome to the SVG TV News for Friday, March 4th. I'm Khalil Kato with the details. Active COVID-19 cases in SVG have fallen to a single digit, the lowest in months. The latest update provided by the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment yesterday indicates that there are nine active cases after four recoveries. One new PCR case and three rapid antigen cases were recorded for the reporting period. There are currently no patients hospitalized with COVID-19. 8,320 cases of COVID-19 and 6,627 recoveries have been recorded in SVG to date. 67,959 vaccines have been administered here thus far. 35,399 persons have received their first dose, while 29,351 have received their second, with 3,209 boosters administered. A health promotions officer in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment, Shanika John, is cautioning persons against hosting private events without permission from the relevant authorities. On NBC Radio this morning, John made reference to a Juve event that is being advertised for this weekend, noting that this event was neither approved by the Ministry of Health nor the Commissioner of Police. John used the opportunity to urge promoters, church leaders, youth leaders and others to comply with the existing COVID-19 protocols. Which means that the authorities can show up at your event, at the start, at the middle, when things are nice, or even, you know, and shut you down. And so those are things that you really don't want to have an encounter with. Even for sporting organizations, I know there's a number of sporting organizations who have reached out. Um, VPL has indicated that they're going to go all fully vaccinated. Um, table tennis is also has indicated that they want to have some games with the children. Um, we have some some coaches who want to start back their small games with their younger children as well. And so we're asking you to reach out to us so that you can get the necessary guidance that you need. John said persons who want to have private events with more than 10 persons indoors and 20 persons outdoors should seek permission as she outlined the application process to have vaccinated events. It's, it's, it's still the same. We're still encouraging 10 persons on the inside, um, no more than 20 persons if you're going to go outdoors. Mm -hmm. But I know um, persons are trying to get back to whatever that definition of normalcy may be for them. And so it varies depending on your sporting organization, the church you attend, um, the promoter you are, etc. All of it is going to vary. So if you are going to have an event or an activity that requires more than 10 persons, on an inside space or more than 20 persons on an outdoor space, mm -hmm. you need to seek permission. Um, and the permission has to come from um, the chief medical officer, which is Dr. Simone Kieser-Beach, or the commissioner of police, Mr. Colin John. And so those are the two persons, and they work very close, hand in hand, mm -hmm. to ensure that the approvals are granted. The Ministry of Health will make recommendations, and the final decision is really up to the commissioner of police in terms of, you know, how it lays out, the security, etc. Um, so we really want people to abide by that particular um, message. Health the health promotions officer said that applications for vaccinated private events should be submitted four weeks prior to the event. Um, there's a team for it and we try to go through the request um, uh, at least once a week or at least twice a week depending on the volume of it. Um, and when I say go through the request, we have to read, we may have to call the person who applied for the application mm -hmm. to make some um, clarification. There's a team that reviews it and then we give you an official response. So if you are planning an event, it's important for you to apply at least three to four weeks depending on what you're having. Um, the bigger your numbers, the earlier you should apply. Right. Um, <laughs> The more persons that are going to be there, the earlier you should definitely apply. Um, even if you are having a small gathering where some persons have been asking for permission to exceed the 20 for their weddings, um, funeral gatherings, etc. And we will give you specific guidance that is, you know, specific to your context. But the most important thing is to ensure that you have that approval, um, which would come from the Commission of Police. Noting that the COVID-19 pandemic has not yet ended, John further urged persons not to let their guard down in protecting themselves from the virus. General relaxation, I mean, it's been a rough year, two years, and people generally feel that um, it's time for me to relax. It's time for me to chill. It's time for me to, to get some fresh air and to, to be like that. But it's also important for us to be able to understand that... Um, we're still in a pandemic and mm -hmm. you can still catch the COVID-19 virus. So 
sanitization, um, wearing your mask, keeping your distance, keeping your bubble tight, and getting boosted is also some of the things that you can do to also ensure that you are protected. So it's it's very important for us not to relax. I know everything around us may seem that you know that's the best way. Mm -hmm. Even if you're not wearing your mask, you have to ensure that you have enough space between you and the next person. The St. Vincent and the Grenadines National Strategy for the Development of Statistics, SVG NSDS, was launched today. Speaking at the launching ceremony, Chief Statistician Laverne Williams said that this is a great milestone and achievement for the Statistical Office in the Ministry of Finance. The SVG NSDS has its origin in the 2017 OECS Regional Strategy for the Development of Statistics and the 2018 CARICOM Regional Strategy for the Development of Statistics, which was endorsed by the heads of governments. Noting that good quality statistics are needed to report progress on the National Economic and Social Development Goals 2013 to 2025 and the 2023, that should be the 2030 agenda, Williams thanked all those who partnered with the National Statistics Strategy. We cannot overemphasize the need for good quality statistics. The statistical office is responsible for a vast array of statistics, including economic and social statistics. Some of these are collected through censuses and surveys. But notwithstanding this, other government departments and non-government actors produce data. This is elaborated in the Statistical Act number 24 of 1983, which mandates the Statistical Office in the Ministry of Finance, Economic Planning, and Information Technology to the following. One, to collect, compile, analyze, abstract, and publish statistical information relative to the agricultural, commercial, industrial, financial, social and general activities and conditions of the inhabitants of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. To collaborate with the departments of, of government in the collection, compilation, and publication of statistical records of administration. Three, to take any census of St. Vincent and the Grenadines as provided in this act, and to organize a scheme of coordinated social and economic statistics about St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Also, the Marrakesh Action Plan in 2004 called for countries to develop national strategies for strengthening and developing statistics for monitoring and evaluating their development outcome. The statistician said the assessment, which is the first stage of the formulation of the National Statistics Strategy, is a critical step towards strengthening the capacity of the statistical office, the various line ministries, departments, agencies, and other key actors in the national data system. It is the first stage in the formulation of the NSDS. It is needed to identify and evaluate the statistical and administrative data produced, the data gaps, and the capacity needs of the members of the NSS, the National Statistical System. It will be conducted through a questionnaire, and it is expected that at the end of this assessment, the findings will be used to formulate a final NSDS strategy document and an action plan containing the proposed direction of the NSS. Our country's ability to produce and manage its official statistics is highly dependent on the cooperation and collaboration of the stakeholders of the NSS. I wish to reemphasize this initiative requires the support and cooperation of all stakeholders. Minister of Finance Camilo Gonzalez commended the chief statistician and her team, whom he noted has been, have been doing a great job amidst trying circumstances, producing, compiling, and disseminating statistics. Minister Gonzalez, however, noted that more needs to be done to enhance the role that statistical analysis plays in the developmental journey. We have trade data that has to be analyzed, the agricultural production data, um, labor force data, our census data, our housing data, tourism data, recently COVID data, um, our disaster vulnerability and, and response data, and of course, bedrock things like our GDP data. All of this data 
paints a picture of where we were, where we are, and where we want to be. And because of its importance to, to not only as mileposts on a journey, um, but to forecast and to adapt policy going forward, um, the, this data is absolutely crucial. Not just as numbers on a page, but as something that is accurate, something that is reliable, something that is timely, um, and something upon which policymakers can rely. Executive Chairman of Sandals Resorts International, Adam Stewart, said the Sandals or Beaches Resort that will be built at Bookament Bay will be second to none that they have ever constructed. During his recent visit to St. Vincent to give a status update on the company's plans for the construction of the 350-room Beaches Resort, Stewart disclosed that Sandals will increase its investment of 100 million U.S. dollars in the proposed Beaches St. Vincent Resort. First time that any one of them had ever been to this country before. And in October of last year, we were having creative meetings and I got to a stage where I said, look, you have to, you got to go to this country. You have to meet the people, you have to sit on the land, you have to understand when all of these years, Prime Minister, you were engaging my father and your son was engaging me and we, we saw the beauty here. And I can tell you first handedly that they all came back from this trip and said they'd never seen anything like it. The land, the people, the opportunity. So that creative energy rolled right into our final design work, which today we want to present to you. So mo most of what we're showing today is not been yet published and will not yet be published for very specific reasons in that we don't like to show our competition what we're going to do. But I'll start with the end in mind to say to you that this hotel will be second to none of anything we've ever done anywhere. Uh, Prime Minister, when you and I, Mr. Raynon, Camelo shook hands, we were talking about $100 million of investment. We have doubled that in phase one. So phase one and two are being done simultaneously. And there is a further expansion of a phase three that can take up to another 150 additional rooms. And everything is being sized with that in mind for the future. Speaking of complete transformation to the Bookament Bay Resort, another representative of Standals International said that with all the projects that are happening, she thinks that the Beaches St. Vincent Resort project is more special and will completely change the game. Amid untouched rainforests and endless vistas, the busy noise of everyday life fades away. Replaced by the sounds of exotic birds, cascading waterfalls, and the laughter of people you hold most dear. Here, new discoveries wait to be unearthed, and lifelong family memories take root. In these lush Caribbean tropics, there's time for the things we forget. We forget about back on the mainland, time for adventure, for real conversation, and enjoying the unrushed pleasure of each other's company. Go glamping in a luxury reserve nestled along a serene river. Run along the white sands that slope gently into the calm, clear shallows and simply lose yourself in time. After all, it's in those moments where families rediscover the things that matter most. Head of, recruitment, head of the recruitment program for Sandals SVG, Winston Anderson, gave an update on the training being provided to selected Vincentians in other territories where Sandals operates, who will be working at the Beaches St. Vincent Resort when it becomes operational. 260-something of them, um, of which well over 100 is already at different properties. We have another 48 that are waiting uh, their permits to go. One of the things that we found really, truly, truly um, impressive is that it almost immediately the, the, the team members that came in immersed within the culture. And in keeping with our culture of upskilling, um, cross-skilling, um, getting people into exposed to different areas, we found within a short time the team members that came, they started doing um, their skills training and in fact I can share that we had experiences where people were engaged for a stewarding or waiter almost within a short time we found that their skill set 
uh, their attitude, the personality was such great that they were moved to other areas. And we've seen already a lot of movements. Police here are investigating the circumstances surrounding a triple shooting incident at Pole Yard, Arnesville last evening. Police say, according to reports, at about 11.20 p.m., several persons were gathered at a shop in Pole Yard when an assailant appeared at the door and opened fire on the persons inside. As a result of the incident, Owen Stoddard, a 48-year-old of Paul's Avenue, Jomo Brody of Edinburgh and Arnesvale, and Randolph Samuel of Lomans Hill all received multiple gunshot wounds about their bodies. The victims were transported to the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital for medical attention, where Stoddard later succumbed to his injuries. The other two victims were reported to be in stable condition. Stoddard's death marks the sixth homicide reported for 2022. A post-mortem examination will be conducted to determine the exact cause of death. Residents of the community, most of whom wish to remain off-camera, all expressed feelings of sorrow over the death of Stoddard, known to them as Kenny, and noted that he was a good person who was not involved in any criminal activities. A nice guy. He got innocent dead. Trust me. He was playing card, jingle, little thing. Yeah. That's true, what did he get? Because he been in the and he got man come up and approach the crowd. The residents of Poliard are also crying out to the government to please install streetlights in their community as they believe gunmen are taking advantage of the lack of lighting in the area at nights. I believe it's time enough for the government put, just like how they put water to pipe in the place to make sure we get water, put light in the place so we make sure we get light so we can see when the gunman and them come in. We don't have no light in the place, we can't see the gunman and them. Just like how they give we two pipe so we could get water, thank them for that. Praise God for that. Under the blessing of God, thanks. Go tell them put light in the place before we get to see the gunman. Them. This is cheat time. One man then get shoot down there, the name not to. The same Kenny who there today get shoot already. Now a boy named Aswan get shoot already. Another boy get shoot already. About nearly seven person don't get shoot in here. Under the night and night. We want light in the place so we could see the gunman and them. The police are soliciting the assistance of persons with information that can assist with the investigations to contact the Assistant Commissioner in Charge of Crimes at 456-1339 or the Officer in Charge of the Criminal Investigations Department or any police station or police officer you are comfortable with. All information received will be treated confidentially. With 132 biosphere reserves in 22 countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, St. Vincent and the Grenadines is now seeking to have one of these reserves. The program, which has been instituted by UNESCO many de decades ago, has been set up in some of the Caribbean islands, and the Bocament Valley in SVG is one of the future prospects. Speaking on a morning talk show program by the Agency for Public Information, Man and the Biosphere Committee member Vincent Reed explains what the project is all about and its importance. Biosphere Reserve is um, like a small ecosystem, a space where living stuff, living things survive in a sustainable way so as to let it be used by all over a long period of time. Uh, in the Caribbean region, St. Kitts has a Biosphere Reserve. Mm -hmm. Tobago recently got declared a part as a biosphere reserve. Trinidad is making a submission, so are we, for the Caribbean region that I am aware of. So that program seeks to take a scientific approach to man living in his environment in a sustainable way so that it can be protected and taken care of while he lives from it to ensure that it, there is still mm -hmm. for the future generation. Reed said the Bookament Valley was chosen for the project as it is home to four species not naturally found anywhere else, among other factors. Generally adopts the ridge to reef approach. Mm -hmm. So it's an entire, it's varying ecosystems within. Um, the Vermont Valley is home to four of our endemic species. 
the document is certain now it as Vermont, mm -hmm. but it's the document valley that four endemic species. Uh, there are the entire area mainstay mm -hmm. was forever from the land. Okay. Farming. Okay. There is a protected forest with the nature trail. Mm -hmm. It's home to the Central Water Sewers Authority's Dalloway Water Treatment Plant that okay. feeds all the way to Calicua. It means that the Vermont, the Bookerman Valley is responsible for the water that Kingstown, the capital of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, is responsible for the water that we get. Okay. MP for West St. George, Curtis King, said that the government has been creating an environment to allow for development in the constituency. King, who was also on the API morning talk show, said there has been much development within the constituency from ordinary citizens and the government. But such growth has been taking place because of the work of the government. We have always identified West St. George um, constituency as one with certain features. And more and more you're seeing that. If you look at the southern end of the constituency, you see the workers progressing towards, as we keep seeing, the, the, the transformation of that area into a massive commercial area, a city area, if you like. And we have the medicinal um, marijuana. There's a project in, in that part of the community there. Then you had the opening of LaView. So it's not just the government doing things. The government is creating the environment to allow for that sort of development. And of course... Minister King said outside of the commercial developments taking place in the southern end of the constituency, he has also been busy with works in various villages, which he is proud of. I distributed, on behalf of the government, some letters to the residents of Upper Queen's Drive, Upper, where um, those persons have been living in an informal settlement for over 40 years, some of them. And we have given them letters that would commence the process of them owning their own property so that they could go on with their lives. We have completed our SPA project. Mm -hmm. I mean, SPA has always been, for many persons, a cultural center. Oh, we have crystallized that, you know, we, we have developed a project that we call the integrated community use of the project. We have a nice administrative building where you can just go and hang out. Mm. And, and in that facility, you, you have um, a bar, you have um, a kitchen next door and provide you with eats, so you have your beverages. And that center or uh, uh, that facility also provides um, outlets for persons to gain self-employment by selling um, their local produce. King noted that one of his greatest challenges in the constituency is road repairs. However, he said plans are already in place to commence work and in some cases complete those that have already started. As you know, West St. George has perhaps the largest network of roads throughout this country. And it is a challenge to maintain all of these roads at any given time, especially given the topography of, of that constituency. So in, in the Dorset Trail, Queen's Drive area, and again, all Belair Village roads, taking you back round to the bridge at Fountain there, we call it White Bridge. Basically, that road is almost um, completed. And right now, on the last piece of, of that road, from my little gap going to the bridge, that is being done.